Hi, I'm Teacher Thomas. Welcome to A-Level Maths. This is for A-Level 9231 Further Pure Mathematics 1. A summary of the main concepts in Topic 1, Roots of Polynomial Equations. In our classes, we've talked about three big ideas relating to the roots topic. The first is sum and product of roots. As an example, you should know that the notation sum of alpha is the sum of all roots to the power of 1. So if, for example, I'm dealing with a cubic, I would have three roots, and I call those alpha, beta, and gamma. An application of this concept is that you often need to be able to recognize sums within other given expressions. And in particular, you often need to manipulate to a fraction which provides a recognizable sum in the numerator, a recognizable sum in the denominator. So if, for example, I were asked to work with 1 over alpha beta plus 1 over alpha gamma plus 1 over beta gamma, what I want to do is work to one fraction and look for, after my manipulation, a recognizable sum concept in the numerator and the same in the denominator. This expression simplifies to, with some algebra, I have in my denominator alpha, beta, gamma, and in the numerator gamma plus beta plus alpha. And you should recognize that here we have in the numerator the sum of alpha and in the denominator sum of alpha, beta, gamma, which we can interpret as negative b over a over negative d over a, which simplifies to b over d. That's an example of the kind of manipulation and evaluation you need to do working with root expressions to identify known sums. An important algebra concept that arises in some roots questions is the concept of complex numbers. In, you can identify a situation in which you have complex solutions, complex roots, when s sub 2, which is the sum of the squares of the roots, let's say we're working with a quadratic, we would have alpha squared plus beta squared, when this value is less than 0, think about what that means. If we're squaring a value and adding that to another squared value, we expect a positive. We're adding two positive numbers. If we end up with less than 0, then this is an indication of complex roots. And roots, plural, because complex roots always come in conjugate pairs. An example of a conjugate pair of complex roots would be the solutions x equals 2 plus 3i and 2 minus 3i. Let me actually go back and change this to a cubic scenario. So let's say our sum sub 2 is alpha squared plus beta squared plus gamma squared. And we would have, if there are complex roots, we would have 2. And then there would be a third solution, which would be a real solution. So maybe the real solution is negative 2. So what this might look like in the coordinate plane is that at x equals negative 2, the cubic intersects the x-axis, and then the two turning points do not produce any further intersection with the x-axis. So there is one real solution, x equals negative 2, and two imaginary solutions. This is not drawn to scale, it's simply a visual to understand what's happening with one real solution and two imaginary solutions. One x axis intercept. And so note that some roots questions relate to the concept of complex numbers. Let's continue with big idea number two. Big idea number two is recurrence. And an example of using recurrence is when a question asks for S3. What we typically will do is we'll find S1 and S2 and use those with algebra to find the value for S3. Another example would be if we're asked to find S sub negative 2, 
we would find the values of S sub negative 1. Probably S1 would be in there, maybe S2 would be in there, depending on the scenario, to use those values plus algebra to solve for S sub negative 2. Sometimes you need to manipulate your equation if, for example, you were looking for S sub 3 and you were dealing with a quadratic, so the highest exponent would be 2, x squared, etc. You would need to multiply everything by x to the power of 1, and then the x squared term would become x cubed, and all other terms would go up by a power of 1 as well. And similarly, if you wanted, say, also in the example I have above, s sub negative 2, and you find that your lowest exponent is the constant term, so x to the power of 0, then you would divide everything by x to the power of negative 2, and you would find that as a result your constant term would now be some value times x to the power of negative 2, and that would represent s sub negative 2 in your calculation. Additionally, you need to be aware of the constant multiplier, which is the multiplication of any constant term in the equation you're working with by the number that represents the degree of the polynomial, 2 for quadratic, 3 for cubic, etc. As a visual of why this works and why it's important. Let's say we're working with x squared plus 2x minus 1 equals 0. When we're dealing with the concept of, say, s sub 2, this relates to adding s sub 2 equals the sum of the squares of our roots. In a quadratic, we would have two roots, thus I'm adding the squares of those roots. Now the way this works, let's say visually, is if I take the given equation and I replace the x with alpha, which I can do because alpha is one of the solutions. Alpha is what I can input into x, and the equation is true. Another scenario, another scenario is replacing x with beta. Again, beta is one of the solutions to the equation, so when I replace x with beta, I also end up with a correct equation. Now summing means adding. If I were to add these two equations I would have alpha squared plus beta squared plus 2 alpha plus 2 beta minus 1 minus 1 equals 0. Alpha squared plus beta squared is s2. In the next two terms we can combine these to 2 times alpha plus beta and then I will write the minus 1 minus 1 as minus 1 times 2 equals 0. And now what we have is we have the s2 replacing the sum of the squares of the roots. We can change the middle term to 2 times s sub 1, which is the sum of the roots to the power of 1. And then notice what happened to the constant term, because we added two equations we have 2 of the same constant, thus I can multiply by 2. Instead of going through this process here that I'm bracketing, what I need to do is to be able to show those workings without writing line by line, is make sure that I adjust my constant by multiplying by the highest degree of the polynomial. In this case, because I have a quadratic with two roots as solutions, I added two equations, I ended up with two of the same constant, thus the shortcut is to multiply that constant by two as I'm dealing with a quadratic. If I were dealing with a cubic, I would multiply by three, which is substitution. A scenario we might deal with in substitution would be we might, give it, we might be given a, an equation that let's say it's a cubic that equals zero and we're told to find another cubic that has the roots 2 alpha minus 3, 2 beta minus 3, 2 gamma minus 3. We do some algebra to arrive at a new equation 
y cubed. It's possible there would be a coefficient over here. I'll call this a y cubed, etc. equals zero. Typically in these questions, we're then asked to work with the roots of x in some form. So as an example, we might be asked to find 2 alpha minus 3 times 2 beta minus 3 times 2 gamma minus 3. This is referencing the original, the given equation, which is the equation in x. What we need to understand about the relationship between x and y, given that we've created y based on the particular form of root we were required to use, in answering this question for x, if we work with y, we can use to replace the root or the expression 2 alpha minus 3 in terms of x, we can use one of the roots of y, which I'll call alpha prime, and then similarly beta prime and gamma prime. Here we are multiplying the three roots of y. This you should recognize as negative d over a, and I use the d and the a from my y equation to find the solution. Once I have that value, then I write in that the product of 2 alpha minus 3 times 2 beta minus 3 times 2 gamma minus 3 equals whatever value I found by working with the y equation. Another common substitution scenario is when you're asked to work with, again we'll go with a cubic, x cubed, and you're asked to work with or find a new cubic with roots in the form of alpha squared or alpha cubed, etc. When you work with the algebraic manipulation, you need to think about manipulating strategically. As an example, let's say that after our substitution and doing some algebra, we end up with the cubic y to the power of 3 over 2 minus 2y to the power of 1 plus y to the power of 1 half minus 3 equals 0. I'm going to put terms on either side of the equation such that when I square, the reason I want to square is notice the highest exponent right now is 3 halves. I want to get to a cubic with the exponent of 3, so I need to square to get my highest exponent from 3 over 2 to 3. I need to put the correct terms together on each side of the equation so that when I do my squaring, I end up with only integer exponents. In this example, the correct manipulation would be to set one side as y to the power of 3 over 2 plus y to the power of 1 over 2 equals 2y plus 3, and then when I square both sides of the equation, I will end up with terms that all have integer exponents. And here again, I can work with y to solve for x. So if after my manipulation, my requirement is to find alpha squared times beta squared times gamma squared, this is referring to the equation in x, so what I can do is recognize that in the equation in y, these each relate to alpha prime, beta prime, gamma prime, and again I would be multiplying alpha times beta times gamma, which would be negative d over a. And here again is my final notation. I would write alpha squared times beta squared times gamma squared equals whatever value that I found in my solution. One more common scenario for substitution is when we're asked to find, let's say, s sub 6. Instead of working through multiple recurrence calculations, you get s3, then recurrence to s4, etc. What I will do is I will note that if I create, let's say that I'm working with a quadratic, so I have x squared something equals 0. If I, either based on a given relationship in the problem, or I simply set up the relationship, x equals y to the power of 1 over 3, and I end up with a y, after I do my appropriate manipulation, I end up with y to the power of 
2, something equals 0. Now what I want to observe is when I'm asked to find S6, that's relating to X. So that would relate to X to the power of 6. In the Y equation, this is Y to the power of 2, which relates to S sub 2. So by finding S sub 2 for Y, I find the value for S sub 6 in X. Again, after doing my working in Y as a final notation, I would write S sub 6 equals whatever value I found calculating sub 2 in Y. This completes the review of Topic 1, Roots of Polynomial Equations.